talked to Coach Norvell just now. He said that he thought the, the attacking unit had showed improvement uh, from the last couple of weeks. I guess, what did you see from, from the defensive front in terms of stopping the run and whatnot? The, you said the defensive line yeah. front? Yeah, linebackers too. Yeah, I mean, we did a better job of controlling the run. Still a couple you know, flat issues that we got to be able to take care of off of the runs. Um, but you know, I think the last couple of weeks we've seen – slow improvement, not accelerated enough, but we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing a little bit more confidence in technique, um, and you know, we're seeing some growth from some of the players that we've been given some opportunities to, and that's got to continue. Coach Norvell also mentioned improved third down defense, but needed to be a little bit better. How did you evaluate your team in that aspect of the game? Not good enough to win the game. Um, you know, there were, there were, there was a, couple plays there, you know, even the first third down, you know, we hold them to a field goal after the sudden change, but we give them an extra series. Just, you know, we could have made that, that third down a lot easier. Um, you know, there were some things that we thought we were able to dictate protection wise. And, you know, we just, you know, it's never okay for any third down to be executed because we have a plan to stop it um, and we need to be better. Um, you know, we got to make sure that we hit um, on each third down opportunity because, you know, we, we got to play better. Um, we got to be there for this football team. We got to keep getting better, um, especially on third downs. Um, I thought our red zone was better um, because they didn't get in the end zone um, each time. So, you know, there are things that you need to build on but still maintain a standard of where you need to be. Losing Cam during that game obviously um, was a challenge. How did you feel like? I mean, Justin seemed like he played well, and just that group overall. How did you feel? Yeah, I mean, you know, it just things happen out there, you know, and so we're trying to make sure we're able to keep that position fresh so that we can play as fast as we can. Uh, I do think Juice in the last couple games when we've given the opportunity continues to gain confidence, um, and that shows up in his execution. Uh, he's able to play a little bit. <clears throat> more to his ability. Um, I think Blake is quietly just mounting reps. Still want to see more playmaking out of him because I know it's there. Uh, DeMarco Ward got in the game uh, because we had to, you know, we didn't want to just leave the three out there with DJ. Um, so I thought DeMarco stepped up and, you know, got his feet wet and was able to give us some snaps um, so that we could keep guys fresh and he could get his own experience. So, um, it, Hopefully we get a few guys back, uh, but we got to just keep getting better with the guys we're giving opportunities. And you know the way we're operating right now is, you know, when the guys are showing it out there, we're giving them their opportunities. When they do well in the game, they get more opportunities. If they don't, we go to the next guy. And so we're just trying to develop the entire defense, the entire team. Whether that's showing up in special teams, you know, Q Jones is showing up in the kicking game um, in a really good way. So we're trying to give them more opportunities on defense. Um, you know, Fenn went down again towards the end of the game, so you know Quinn was in there and did a nice job. The ball didn't come his way, but you know there are some of these guys that are redshirt freshmen that are starting to get. We we believe in them. They just got to continue to believe in themselves so that we can maximize those opportunities when they get on the field. You mentioned some of the redshirt freshmen. KJ Kirkland came in for Shaheem. You know, what did you make of his performance in that game? Good. You know, I thought, you know, Kirk deserves the opportunity to continue that role, um, you know, of playing for us. You know, I thought he handled things really well. I thought he was calm. He was in position. Um, you know, things weren't too fast for him. He controlled the moment. Um, you know, there's some plays he left out there um, that I expect for him to make. He was a, he was a step late on a dig. Um, you know, missed a, a missed a tackle, but did make some. And so, you know, just building on the positives and learning from the things you need to be corrected. And he's somebody that I believe will do that. That's why he earned that opportunity. And you know, he'll be better this week. It's my job to make sure he is. We you talked about. After the first game, we've seen in the last couple of weeks Sione's role grow, get more playing time. I guess how have you seen him respond to to a larger role within the defense? Good. You know, I thought Nusi had a good. Um, I don't want to say a great game, but he was impactful. You know, he made a couple plays. He shut down a couple runs on the edge, just physicality, coming off, making blocks. He actually showed up in a pass rush on two opportunities and got good hits on the quarterback. Uh, execution level, for the most part, is really good. we got to clean up a couple of those split zone plays. Um, we just 
we came too, I don't want to say too aggressive, but our technique was flawed with a couple of those that uh, we got to clean up. And he's a veteran player. He's better than that. Uh, but, you know, again, Nusi's one of those ones that we've given a little bit more opportunity, and that's going to continue to happen for him because I do like the direction he's headed. We see you guys in practice. One of the things you guys do a lot of the pursuit drills. Uh, when you see film, is it unrealistic to sometimes as fans or media, you'll see somebody trailing a play and not giving great effort. Is it is that unrealistic to expect that every play, or is that the expectation? And, and how do you handle it if you see that? Yeah, not realistic from a standpoint of it's realistic for us to expect the most every play. And you know, if the guy doesn't have a lot of gas in the tank because of whatever that energy level is, that's our job as a coach to react to that and make sure the next guy's in the game. And, you know, I don't think there's not a lot of players that I've come across in my time that just refuse to chase the ball. Um, if that happens, then there's a major issue, and that needs to be dealt with um, aggressively. Um, but when it comes down to, you know, if the energy level, whatever that is, isn't there, that's our job as coaches to react to it um, because it is. I mean, if you don't chase the ball, you have no chance of winning the game because that's the, it doesn't matter if you're a zone team, a man team, a three down front. You know, the more people you get around the ball, the better chance you have to get the ball back. And um, so, I mean, that is something that is critical. We are not as good as we need to be in that in that area right now. And that falls on me, and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that gets corrected ASAP. Following up on that, to, to be better, to be where you want it to be with, with the energy level, like is that – is that something that you guys can do daily as coaches to emphasize it? Is it have to be personnel? Like when you're trying to get effort, energy, that kind of stuff, how do you how do you maximize it? All. All. I mean, you know, sometimes it's you know just a coach taking the reins of a leadership standpoint. Sometimes it's a player. I mean, sometimes when you, know, you saw it out there in the first drive, you know, nobody wants to turn the ball over on the first drive. It happens. And we went out there and made a play, then made another play, then we gave up a play, then came back and made another three plays. And you started to see that energy get created. So what happens first, the energy or the play being made, right? Because they kind of work off of each other. And sometimes when momentum's happening and you're going against the momentum, it takes a play to change that momentum. Now, does that happen because your attitude going into the play, your mentality going into the play helps you make that play to change it? Yes, it all matters. And... I think in order for it to get done, it starts at the top. And I think we have the best leader in, in, in sports, in Coach Norvell. And he's consistently that person, which allows the opportunity for each coach to be that person, which allows for each player. And so it's just, it's all part of it, but everybody that takes a baton has to speed it up. And I think that's an important thing to make sure that that happens. Uh, two for one. Uh, and they're not even related, but I'm just going to try to save him walking back and forth. Uh, what can the, the sudden change defense, the way you guys play in those situations, what can that do for this team? It seemed like there were some positives there. And then the other question is on the some of the past plays where there have been breakdowns and communication or what, whatever's happening, is that a matter of those guys, new, new players just needed to be more time on the field together, or are there things you're already doing to try to address that? Totally good question. Totally. Yes. Let's, yeah, I, I like the synopsis of sun change defense. Let's hit that. Um, you know, I try to bring in practice, you practice that every time because you change periods. And so every time you change period and you go into a new, a new session, like that's the, because you went from not on the field to on the field. And there's the mental preparation to, you know, everybody here has a job. All of a sudden, you clock out, and your job's done, and your boss calls you, and you got to come back and do the job. That's what it is. And so, you know, sometimes you don't think about it, and you just go and react. Sometimes there's time to think about it, whatever that is. But we try to practice those situations because I see it as this. When it's sudden change, our team is lacking momentum. That's a great opportunity for the defense to go grab it back. And there's no better thing than when things are going this way to get them back the other direction, right? Because that, that breaks wills of other teams. And so you know, we got to take advantage of those opportunities and see it as that great opportunity. And um, you know, unfortunately, it happened a few times on Saturday. Uh, we weren't perfect because there were some field goals. It was you know, opportunities that we probably could have even been better. Um, then going back to the, just the coverage, you know, 
we play a lot of tight coverage. I mean, it's part of what we do. And teams try to use formations and motions to create space because they don't feel confident just lining up and trying to create space one-on-one. -on -one. And so I see, tell our guys, you've earned the right to get them in condensed formations because they, they haven't been getting open with the space. There was some great route matches, I thought, Saturday. You know, our guys did a really, really good job on a lot of them. Um, and then some of them, even when we ID'd it, for some reason, we just allowed the route to outrun us a few times. Um, and so that's more of a technique thing. But I do think when you're playing, me and you have him and him, you know, him and him go fast, one goes slow, one goes fast, one comes off. The more we play together, the easier it is on the execution. Um, and, you know, I still want to get the best players out there. And it's a combination of the guys that are the best individual players, but there's a point of it, the guys that play the best connected defense, because you know those opportunities are going to come up. And my job is to get the guys that are the best individual players playing the most connected defense as much as possible. And when you do that well, you go out there and teams don't score. It seems like that uh, Patrick and Marvin had their most impactful games uh, on Saturday. Overall, how did you think they played as a, as a defensive end duo, I guess? Um, so separate from Nusi, just those two? Yes. Okay. Well, I think first thing, Corey, is the average two yards a rush. So now what does that give you the opportunity to do? Go rush the passer and put them in situations that we get to go do that. And I do think that's both of their strong suits. Um, you know, there were times that I thought we were – good in the run game at that position. And there's still some times that we still saw some of the lapses in alignment or technique. And, you know, that's just constant coaching and reminders and, you know, me calling the defense better to suit how they're playing and all the adaptability. You know, but we did see some lost plays. We did see some sacks. did see some pressures. did see some hands on some ball disrupts. Um, so better, but we need better. Coach, I think Memphis had over 70 plays. They own the ball for 36 minutes. How hard is it for a defense to stay fresh throughout the game, and how did you feel your team did in such a physical aspect? I mean, we didn't win the game, so we didn't do well enough. I don't try to judge it just by that, but that is the end result. And it doesn't mean when we win the game that it's always great. But part of that is third down. Like, some of those, like – you know, if, if, you, if you hold them for two conversions, you probably get that play count down to 65. And um, so we've got to do a better job with that. Two other younger guys who got seem to get extended roles, uh, Jabril Rawls, uh, K.J. Sampson. How did they do with those, those opportunities? Um, K.J. Sampson, some good, some not so good. And, um, you know, and some things were just some little things. Like he was too tight in his alignments a couple times, and they got four legs on him, and he got moved. Um, I do like his energy and his athleticism. I think there's playmaking there for, for, for Samson. And, um, you know, that's just got to continue. You know, him and Grady, you know, kind of shared some, some reps there. You know, we ended up playing five defensive tackles. Um, you know, want to continue that. So, you know, I do think K.J. Sampson has a – future this year and continued and he's just got to have another good week um, you know Jabril went in you know I think he gives us some really good coverage ability in the slot um, you know we've moved them in there not full time but a good amount to try to steal some snaps from Kevin and Earl um, because he does so some natural ability and um, you know he just got to go out there and have another good week, and we got to keep putting him in situations. He's got to be able to stay on the field. He's got to be able to give us what we need throughout the week of practice, and then that opportunity will come from him. And when we put him out there, it means he's ready for it. So we just need we need a little bit more from him, uh, but I do believe that he can give it to us. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. You said three. You never say three. That's a weird. Number. I saw three people with him. That's good. I mean, I could take.